covering the low country. This is News 2's Beyond the Headlines. Moderated by Brad Franco. Good Sunday morning to you. I'm Brad Franco. Welcome to Beyond the Headlines. And this week, dominating news coverage came at the end of the week with the announcement that the FAA would launch a comprehensive review of the Boeing 787. Here are the facts. It was a rough week. Friday, you had an oil leak overseas on a 787. On Friday, you also had a windshield crack on a 787 from a Japan airline. Wednesday, you had a brake system. An erroneous report, but a brake system malfunction as far as the computer was concerned on board a Dreamliner. Tuesday, you had a fuel leak, and the video a lot of people saw, of course, that fire on board a 787 Dreamliner on the runway at Boston's Logan Airport. That started what turned out to be a very long week for Boeing and the 787 program. There's the video we've been talking about of firefighters crawling up into the tail section of that Dreamliner. It turned out that was a result of a battery malfunction. Want to bring in our panel. Mary Schiavo is the former inspector general from the FAA. Brendan Kearney is a reporter who covers Boeing specifically for the Post and Courier. And Brian Hicks is a columnist down at the Post and Courier. Mary, I want to start with you because uh, this is something that we saw on Friday and we discussed it then. It was kind of unprecedented when you had Ray LaHood, the secretary of the Department of Transportation, you have the FAA administrator and Boeing, which you expect to stand up there and say, we're confident in the safety of our airplane. But to have the government say that as well was a little unusual. That's a little unusual. You want Boeing to say that. They're in the business of building uh, you know, uh, desirable and safe planes. You expect them to say that. But for the government to step in and say, oh, it's, it's all safe, it's all good, before they've started their review um, is a little bit... Um, uncharacteristic and, and ill-advised. The government's supposed to be an objective regulator. They're supposed to be the, the safety team to go look and make sure that everything's okay. But I think the FAA was a little behind the eight ball and they, they kind of hinted at that when they said, well, we want to make sure that what we did was robust enough, that, we, that we're comfortable and confident in our processes in reviewing the plane. So I think the FAA is a little uncomfortable right now too. Brendan, you were on that conference call and listened in to that uh, press conference as well. You've covered Boeing extensively uh, since they arrived here in Charleston. No problems from a Charleston plane, but it all trickles down because it's all under the Boeing umbrella. Right, and right, the planes that have been involved in these so far have been, right, the Japan Airlines. The only, that, the only planes that have come out of Charleston have been the Air India planes. Mm -hmm. Um, which have had issues, but none this week. Um, but you're right, it's, it's one big Boeing name, and every 787 has fuselage sections that come out of North Charleston, the aft and the mid-body um, mid factories out there. So you're right, I think it, it all sort of becomes one thing. Um, and, and even with, with, with these issues, a lot of them have to do with uh, parts that have come from suppliers from Japan or elsewhere. Um, but, but right, it, it all sort of ends with, with the Boeing name and they have to, to deal with that brand protection. Right, a lot of cringing. I mean, everywhere, anybody who has Boeing somewhere attached on, on their shirt or, or signing their paychecks, um, you talk to people on a daily basis. What, what are people thinking about Boeing this week when they, when they hear all this news? Well, they're a little worried about that. South Carolina's invested a lot in Boeing and, and we're being tied to Boeing. And even though none of these planes that have had these problems, are out of Charleston per se, there's still going to be this, oh, the, the people who are criticizing Boeing for coming here, uh, this is going to give them a little ammunition, I'm afraid, and there'll be some, uh, there'll be some political backlash maybe. Setting the table here as we discuss uh, the incidents with Boeing this week, we've got a lot more to get into as far as that press conference we saw on Friday and Boeing's response to this, and we're going to continue that discussion with our panel when we return Beyond the Headlines. Welcome back to Beyond the Headlines. I'm Brad Franco. We're continuing to discuss the Boeing situation and the 787 incidents uh, this week that uh, prompted an FAA review, a comprehensive review of all of the critical systems in that airplane. Mary Schiavo is the former inspector general for the FAA. We also have Brendan Kearney from the Post and Courier and Brian Hicks from the Post and Courier as well. Uh, Mary, when we talk about a, the robust, rigorous review uh, that they touted during that press conference on Friday, but then in the same breath, they said, eh, maybe we need to look at just exactly how robust that review was. 
Well, what people need to understand is who does a certification on a new aircraft, and a lot of the uh, inspectors are actually Boeing employees, just like their Airbus employees or their airline employees. Um, a new aircraft is you know, 95, 98% self-inspected because there just aren't that many FAA inspectors. So the inspectors on the plane mostly were right out of Seattle. So by them bringing in people from other parts of the country, the FAA will really get a fresh look. And maybe we'll have some people who aren't, you know, in the plant every day and perhaps more objective. But I did detect that the FAA is unsure of itself and needs to satisfy itself that it did its job. How concerned should people be if, if the FAA is not satisfied with itself or, or <laughs> unsure? Well, the FAA is often unsure of itself. What, what they need to know is that this process will actually make the plane better in the long run. Because this is how it usually works. The FAA allows all sorts of aviation industries to have their own inspectors and literally put the seal of the FAA on something they've inspected. This will add a tremendous measure of review and not a typical review. This will be persons from outside the Seattle area. They will be looking at things that others have not. So this will be a major step and a major helpful step. And I think Secretary LaHood was sending that message for the, the DOT secretary to stand there with the FAA. It was a clear message the FAA should get its act together. I think one thing that we all took away from this, and, and I think bears driving home, this is not unusual for there to be problems with an airplane. But you know, this is the first time a new airplane has come out where you have Facebook, you have Twitter, you have the internet, you have 24-hour news cycles. Brendan, you have this going on. It's in your face constantly. And Boeing is kind of out there, like, like Mary said before, if, if you're going, you're on Boeing. Is that what you said? Uh, well, if the old going. saying, I ain't going. You know, If it ain't Boeing, I ain't going, was the old saying. Right. <laughs> right. But you're right. With, with, with Twitter, if, if you were following Twitter this week, it seemed like there was a new incident every few hours or at least every day and there was and and right it gets that that sort of snowballing effect where you feel like what what's going on you know electrical fuel brakes it's like are, are, you know are the wheels coming off here those are um, those are big systems by the way right and yeah and the FAA said that they're gonna look at everything but especially the electric system um, on the plane but but you're right with the, with the fast pace it, things can sort of feel like they're out of control fast and maybe that's why the FAA felt like they needed to step in and say we're going to look at the whole systems here. How concerned should the flying public be? I'll let all three of you answer that because, I mean, you, here you have this airplane and we talked about if we had that electrical fire over the ocean mid-flight, what happens? Well, this is an ETOPS plane, which stands for Extended Twin Operations over Water. And uh, the sort of industry joke about that is engines turn or passengers swim. So on a long-range plane intended to go over water, it's of great concern because you don't have a nearby safety airport to put down. Many accidents can be averted if you can land right away. So people will be concerned. Um, after this initial period, it's usually about 18 months to two years. We're on a new model plane where they work out the bugs, if you will. And then statistics show that the newer the plane model, the safer it is after the initial period. So they must endure to get past this period, but then it'll be good. Brendan? I guess one thing to say is that, that there are only about 50 planes out there, only one U.S. airline flying it. So you know, it's not a lot of people are, is around here or even in general are flying it yet. Um, so not a lot of people are making this choice between a 787 and some other plane. Um, and the Boeing and, and uh, FAA uh, officials today said that there are you know, tons of redundancies built into the plane, that whenever there was an incident this week, the plane reacted in the way that it was designed. Um, so I guess you know, they, they want you to make you yeah. feel safe, but right, and you can't control the, the popular perception that there's something wrong with the plane. Yeah, and, and well, all the customers who had incidents with those planes also came out and, uh, and spoke with right. a vote of confidence for Boeing. We have much more to discuss here on Beyond the Headlines as we continue to discuss the Boeing incidents this week when we return. Stay with us. Welcome back to Beyond the Headlines. I'm Brad Franco. I'm joined by Mary Schiavo, former Inspector General of the FAA, Brendan Kearney from the Post and Courier, and Brian Hicks as well. Going to wrap things up. Brian, uh, your final thoughts. Well, it's definitely not a good week for Boeing, but I think that um, you're going to see South Carolina politicians come out and try to, um, to spin this and, and help them for what little good that does because uh, we have a lot invested in, in the 
company here. Well, uh, Brendan, I would say it, it doesn't you know doesn't look good now, but um, the plane is a new plane and it's performed very well so far. It's hard to see that now, but in general, and so we'll have to see what, what the investigation brings. Mayor? Well, I think in the bigger picture, there's a silver lining. Boeing assembles aircraft from parts made literally from hundreds of parts suppliers in dozens of countries around the world. Some of those suppliers and manufacturers, the FAA hasn't visited in years. We're going to get the FAAers out of Washington and on planes to go see what's going on in the industry, and that's always a plus. A little more eyesight helps, you know, 2020 should be forward-looking, mm -hmm. not hindsight. All right, very good. I want to thank all of you for being here and thank you for watching Beyond the Headlines. Join us again next Sunday as we go deeper into the stories making news here in the Low Country of South Carolina. Make it a great one.